All right, ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to another episode. I'm Dookie Betts. This is going to be vlog number seven. Tonight we're playing $1, $1 blinds with the occasional $2 or even double straddle to $5. So some hands turn into a 112, 1125, and maybe even 112510. Things get pretty crazy. There's a total of about $3,000 on the table which is honestly just unheard of for this home game. It's gotten really big the last month or so. So I'm excited to show you guys the footage that I got from this game. We're gonna buy in for $150. And if you like what you see, make sure to watch to the end to watch me turn my sand into gold. All right, as stated before, we are buying in for $150. Unlike in the past where we've had weird like 25 cent denomination chips, we don't have any of that right now, we just have our $1 and our $5. I do want to apologize in advance for our white chips being a different brand than the rest of our chips. It certainly looks very unprofessional. I ordered a bunch of $1 chips, but they didn't come in on time. So just bear with me while we have to use these disgusting, hideous, terrible looking white chips. Without further ado, let's get into the action. Another side note really quick, we played for about 9 hours on this night, so just a very long game for sure. So that being said, obviously all of my hands aren't going to be included in this video, these are just the highlights. The main takeaways from the night, let's get into it. About the third orbit in, we look down at Ace-Queen of Diamonds. We've obviously played a few hands since the game started, this was the first big one. We see an under the gun raise to $3, and I go ahead and 3 bet from the cutoff to $9 with Ace-Queen suited. Really good hand to play in position, obviously we will be 3-betting. We see a cold call from the button, which I thought was a little strange. And then the under-the-gun player 4-bets us to $23. This is a very well-known regular at this game, and he certainly likes to splash about. He does a lot of weird things, a lot of questionable moves, at the very least. So against a normal human being, this would just probably be either a call or a fold. A lot of guys don't have bluffs here, and you're only really going to see aces, kings, and ace-king in this spot, but certainly not against this player. So that being said, we go ahead and just move all in, button quickly gets out of the way, and it gets back over to the man eating the burrito. Eventually, burrito man finds a call here. Surely calling a 5-bet jam while eating a burrito has to be strong, right? That's what I thought. Until he flipped over ace-deuce of spades. Really a hand that I wouldn't expect anybody to have except Burrito Man. So we go ahead and run things once for blood, and we hold, and we scoop a $171 pot. Really good pickup here, really good hand, and I'm glad we're starting the night off on a good note. Following this wonderful spot with Ace Queen, we look down at pocket threes. Not a premium, but still pretty good. When we see a plus one raise to $3, I go ahead and three bet the button to $9. The big blind and the plus one call, so we're going three ways to a flop here with pocket threes. The flop comes to jack ten rainbow board, when we see the big blind and the plus one check it over to us, it seems kind of counterintuitive to try and bluff going three ways, so we just check this flop back, let's take a turn. The turn card makes me feel a certain type of indescribable euphoria that I can't really explain with words. It's the three of spades. We see both players check it on over to us once again, and we have a super disguised hand now, so we can really go and do whatever we want. Aside from obviously checking, we're definitely betting this turn. We decide for a size of $14, and when we see the big blind check raise to $30, I'm all for it. This is music to my ears. The plus one player pretty quickly hits the muck, and it's back over to me. I have a decision to make. I can either try and get all the money in now, or I can just slow play this in position. From a GTO perspective, I probably should just be calling here, but from an exploitative perspective, this player doesn't really find all too many bluffs, so when I see him bet this check raise on the turn, I'm pretty confident that he has a hand he wants to go with, so we just flick all the money in. Let's see what happens. All in. That's 30. Yeah, <laughs> Are there fairies left? I'm like Eden. Whatever you want, Molly. That's right, this player called us with King Jack. He is drawing dead. We actually run the board out infinite times here because it's just a needle. It's kind of funny, right? I pick up the $302 pot and add $156 to my stack. Absolutely sun running so far. Let's keep it going. We look down at King Queen of Hearts on the button. We've got a plus one raise to $3. The cutoff makes it 10. I cold call the 10. Eventually the plus one player folds and we're going heads up to a flop. The flop comes 4-4-3 two-tone and the cutoff player starts with a check. 
which I thought was a little strange considering this is a pretty simple board, simply put, and I would imagine that my entire range would have to call here. Most of his range should be betting, I think. And th there's just a lot of continuation going on with this board, so I'm surprised that I didn't see any bet. I take this as a sign of weakness, obviously, but I'm not ready to turn my hand into a bluff just yet, so I go ahead and check things back. The turn comes the three of hearts, so we pick up a flush draw. We see this player check it over to us once again, and now I'm entirely convinced that he doesn't have a pocket pair. This player loves to blast off. And he's definitely on the aggressive side, so he would be betting any pairs on this board almost all the time, I think. So when he checks it over to us, I bet 15, and he calls. The river comes the deuce of spades, changes absolutely nothing. And at this point, I have king high. I'm an adult. He checks it over to me once again. And I really don't think I have any choice but to try and bluff here. There's a chance that he has, like, queen high, and we're good anyways. Obviously, he's going to have a lot of ace highs as played. So we go ahead and stick things in for $35, try and get him off one of those ace-high combos. He calls us, he shows us ace-king, and we lose. Good call by him. Well played. Our bluff didn't work here. It's time to tilt off our entire stack. Totally kidding about tilting it off. We look down at pocket aces after about another orbit. We're playing out of the big blind, and we have the straddle on. So we are playing 1-1-2 one, one, right now. We see an under-the-gun limp, a button limp and the small blind limped. Time to raise things up here with the aces. We pick a size of $12. Following this, the straddler folds, the under the gun limper calls, the button calls, and the small blind folds. So not ideal, but we are taking things three ways. Better than going five ways, I guess. We see a flop of three ten deuce with two spades with 40 bucks in the middle. Obviously, I'm going to be betting here. Continue to try and put as much money in as possible. I bet $15. We see the under the gun player do a scary little like chip pump fake, whatever you want to call it right now. And then he eventually just calls. This actually kind of frightened me in real time. Um, he could have a lot of flush draws and then you never really know in these spots in a home game. Like I guess they could have some two pairs or sets. So I was a little alarmed. The player on the button gets out of the way and we're heads up to a turn. The turn comes the jack of hearts and at this point in this hand I'm just really sped up right now. I'm freaking out that he pump faked me. This actually really got in my head for some reason. I checked it over. He bets 25 and I go ahead and call. I'm not done with my aces just yet. The river comes the nine of spades and honestly I just really felt like this player had a flush or a strong hand like a two pair straight something like that. I check it over to him. And he checks it back, which I was just, like, shocked at this point. I don't know what he had. Aces were good. But I truly felt that if he blasted the river, I'm probably folding. And I'm glad that he didn't put me in a really tough spot. As we can see, though, my read was way off. So something that I need to get fine-tuned going forward. I obviously messed this hand up. And him pump faking me on the flop really had a strong emotional impact on my decision making. Which simply can't happen when you're playing poker. Two hands later, it's my deal. I choose Omaha, and before you guys call me an idiot in the comment section, I'm well aware that this hand isn't good. I know that. <laughs> but I'm still gonna play it anyways, because I like Omaha and I like to gamble in this game a little bit. So we raise the button to $3, the small blind 3 bets us to 12 the big blind folds, and I'm sorry PLO pros, but I'm calling this 3 bet. The flop comes Jack-10, Deuce, 2-Tone. We've got top and bottom pair as well as a gut shot to the straight. The small blind player takes a pretty standard C bet here of about 130, bet seven bucks. With my hand, I'm not going anywhere just yet. I probably could raise too, but I don't raise. I just call, let's see a turn. Turn card comes the deuce of diamonds, really good for us. We now have twos full of jacks. When we see the small blind check it over to us, it's time to start putting money in the pot. We have a really good hand here. Pick a size of $20 and eventually the small blind calls. The river's the four of hearts, and at this point it's kind of hard to get value here. There's no straights, no flushes, so we're really only looking at like, I guess, 2x that isn't filled up. But lucky enough for us, the small blind player now leads for a small size of 20 bucks. Kind of music to my ears. I go ahead and raise things up to $85, and he pretty quickly folds. We take down a really nice pot here. I'll show you a card. The beats exactly. you. Yeah, yeah, so nice. the deuce? And then, yeah, exactly. exactly. Yeah. A few hands later, we look down at ace-queen offsuit in the big blind. We've got an under-the-gun raise to three. The button flats. The small blind folds. And I three-bet things to $16 from the big blind. We've got an under-the-gun fold. 
and the button calls the three bets who are going heads up to a flop. Jack eight five on the flop with two hearts. Keep in mind this button originally flatted the under the gun open, so his range is very much capped, hence making me decide to bet $15 here to continue to tell the story that I have a really big hand. I also think this player is on the tighter side, so I do think I can get him to fold a lot. Eventually he flicks in the 15 bucks and we're going to a turn. The turn comes the king of spades, and I go ahead and bet $50 really quickly. He eventually folds, which is very good for us. We get a nice bluff through here. And I'm just going to pat myself on the back really quickly. This is a really good bluff, and when we have a good player who's kind of tight, kind of nitty, flatting the button, he's going to have a very capped range, like I said earlier. He's not going to have kings. He's not going to have jacks. He really can't have any of those good hands. So I'm going to continue blasting here. Even if he calls my turn bet, I'm happy to put all the money in the river with ace high here as a bluff. And I'm just going to put him in a tough spot all day long. So I'm really happy with this bluff onto the next hand. All right, I showed you guys a hand that I played really well. Full transparency. Now I'm going to show you a hand I played like dog. We've got the straddle on, so we're playing 1-1-2. One, one, it folds all the way around to me in the big blind. I look down at 10-8 offsuit. Obviously, probably shouldn't be raising this hand. But I go ahead and raise to $8, attempting to steal the straddle. The straddler calls. The flop comes king, queen, jack with two spades. We have the ten of spades. We flop an open ender. Backdoor flush draw. Not really the greatest flop ever, but we have something. We don't have nothing. So that's, that's a good sign, right? In real time, I start with a check. I think, looking back on it now, I probably should just be betting here. We have some equity. We could get him to fold some hands. And I think we should bet. We end up checking, he bets $7, and then this is where everything just goes south. We end up check raising to $22. I don't really know what we were thinking, we only get called by better. We're drawing, this is silly. He calls the 22, let's see a turn. The turn comes the inconsequential three of diamonds, and we end up betting here for $40. Out of the flop, the turn, the river, and preflop included actually. I think I'm okay with this, like this is probably the only street that I don't mind. He calls the 40, we're off to a river. River comes the seven of hearts, and this is when everything goes south. I end up checking, I just completely give up. He bets $100, and I pretty much just snap fold, I say I missed, X, Y, and Z. I think as played, I need to be bluffing this river. It kind of stinks, but I just have to man up and do it. I have 10 high here, I'm blocking ace 10, I'm blocking 10 nine, I'm blocking all the straights. If I go all in here and make a big move, it's going to look incredibly strong, and I think I can get him to fold a lot. And I know it's slightly uncomfortable to jam in this stake, but I, I just have to do it. So I'm pretty upset with how I played this hand. Anyways, on to the next one. Next hand, we get really funky with it. We're playing a $5 bomb pot. Five ways. We each throw in five bucks. I look down at ace-9 offsuit. Pretty good hand for a bomb pot, all things considered. And the flop comes. Ace-jack-deuce. As you can see, I started with a check. It checked all the way around to the cutoff, who ends up betting $15 into this pot. The button folds, gets back over to me, and I have top pair. I have a really easy call. We flick in the 15, everybody else folds, and we're going heads up to the turn. Turn comes the seven of spades, and once again, we start with a check. We don't really want to bloat this pot into anything out of proportion, considering it is a bomb pot, and he can literally have anything. Eventually, the cutoff player finds a bet of 25 bucks, and I'm pretty happy just to call here once again. Let's see a river. The river comes the nine of clubs. Really good river for us, obviously. And for a brief moment, I thought about leading into this pot here, but I considered my options, and I just thought that this would look way too strong. I still want him to be betting worse two pairs, and potentially keep bluffs in as well. We start with the check once again. He pretty quickly checks it back, and we win the pot. Nice little pot there. I didn't really want to include this hand, but I feel like I have to. We're playing 1-1. One, one. We've got the straddle to 2. And then as you can see, we have a straddle to 5 and a straddle to 10. So we're playing the triple straddle. We're pretty much playing 5-10 at this point, and it's just stupid. We look down at king 10. We raise to 25 bucks, and we immediately get 3-bet to $75. We fold our hand. Not really a noteworthy hand, but just funny that we're playing 5-10. Alright, for those of you who don't know, on occasion this game is known for playing Indian. If you guys have seen Game of Gold on YouTube, Indian's a game where you have one card on your head, and whoever has the highest card wins the betting round. We sort of play a little bit differently. 
we get two cards, we play a full hand of poker, you just don't know what you have, you can see what everybody else has because they have it on their forehead, but you yourself don't know your actual hand. And we played an $850 pot doing this. It was probably the most degenerate thing of my life, but it was a lot of fun. The button raised to $10, he had 4-2 offsuit, me not knowing what I had, I assumed I was better than that, so I raised to $30. It gets over to my friend JQ in the big blind, and he raises to $110. JQ is wearing a beautiful pair of pocket threes on his forehead. When it gets back over to the button player, he's staring at my mystery hand, and he's also staring at pocket threes. He goes all in for $244, and I'm looking at him with 4-2 off. I see that someone already folded a deuce. I see that JQ has pocket threes. As long as I don't have a deuce in my hand, I'm flipping with JQ, and I'm likely ahead of 4-2 off. It seems degenerate, but, I mean, equity-wise, I have to be flipping with JQ and then ahead of 4-2 for sure. I end up making the call with my unknown hand. Eventually, JQ calls behind, and we're running things for 850 bucks. Once it's all said and done, it's exactly $850 in the middle. Me and JQ have a side pot for 118 bucks, and then the main pot is $732. And we look down at queen five. So we're actually ahead here. We're getting it in good. We run it three times. And we win two out of the three boards. Feels really good to get lucky. We end up profiting $263 from this hand. Not to mention that this hand absolutely smashed all the records we had for this home game. This was by far the largest pot ever played. And of course it just comes in Indian. And we're sitting on heaps now. <clears throat> Let's ride. <laughs> a few orbits later, we're still sitting on about 500 bucks. We've got a cutoff open to $4, and the button makes it $17. I look down at ace-king offsuit, and I have a pretty easy 4-bet here. I size up because I'm out of position. I go ahead and make things $65, and it folds back to the button, who's got a decision to make. The button player takes absolutely forever to figure out what he wants to do here, which is a sign of weakness in my eyes. I don't think this player is going to take forever to put all the money in with aces or kings here, and I don't necessarily think he's tanking to trap me. He eventually puts it all in. I snap call. Let's see what we're up against. Whatever you want to do. He's got ace-10. One time? Yeah, one time. One time. Please hold. That's a good start. Yeah, that's Cheers. That's right, this player 4-bet ripped, ace-10 off. We snapped called. 313 bucks in the pot, and we go ahead and win $159. The player that I just stacked, always a good sport about it. He's going to go ahead and rebuy. And it doesn't take long until we go to war with him once again. Here we look down at ace-deuce of spades, we've got an under-the-gun limp, the middle position raises to $6, this player we just stacked is in the cutoff, he calls, and I'm on the button with ace-deuce, I'm gonna go ahead and put maximum aggression into the middle, I raise to $22. Very quickly it folds back to the cutoff player, who just flatted the 6 bucks, and he puts in the call for 22 so we're going heads up in position with this player once again. Pretty ideal situation for us. The flop comes ace, king, queen with two diamonds and a club. There's $53 in the middle. When he checks it over to us, I go ahead and bet really, really tiny here. Just to make this look kind of funky and confusing, maybe get him off of his game a little bit. Typically in these spots, I would size up with two diamonds being out there. I would also check a rainbow board that's ace high just to pot control with my ace in case he's got a better kicker. But in this instance, $10 is what we choose to do. He calls, we're going to a turn. The turn comes absolute gin. We just bang off the best turn card in the deck. It's the deuce of clubs. The only real hand that we're worried about is jack 10, but I really don't think he would just call on the flop with that. He checks over again, and I'm going to continue to really just do weird things here. I could bet bigger. The SPR is so low that betting 22 is probably all right, though. He snap puts it all in. We snap call. We show our hand. And he just looks physically disgusted right now. Not your night, kiddo. Whatever you want. Once. <laughs> One time. Uh, you got outs? One time. Come on. That's not you. No way. No. 
And he flips over eights. Our two pair holds against an unknown hand. We give him some needling. It's always fun. He's a good sport. And we take all of his money. On to the next hand. This next hand's gonna be a quick one. We look down at pocket kings on the button. We've got a plus one raise to five dollars, and the cutoff calls. I quickly go ahead and raise things to 18 bucks, and both the players come along. We're going three ways to a flop. The flop comes a6 deuce with two clubs and a heart, and the plus one player pretty quickly just dumps his entire stack in the middle, amounting to a total of $108. The cutoff player folds and it gets back over to me. I pretty quickly size up the size of the pot, look at his stack, and like really just reluctantly fold here. He could have had clubs, I suppose, but we fold. Hate to see the ace on the flop. And he later tells us that he had an ace, so that's a good fold on our behalf. This next hand, we look down at pocket sixes in the plus one position. Under the gun player, he's pretty tilted at this point. He raises things up to three bucks. I flat the three in the plus one. Middle position player calls, as do the blinds, so we're going five ways to a flop here. The flop comes 2-3-4 rainbow. We're going five ways here. The under-the-gun player shouldn't connect that well with this board, but he decides to bet $10 into 15 here. I'm pretty happy to just raise things up to 30. We've got an overpair to the board, which is pretty hard to do with pocket sixes. We also have the gut shot to go with it, so we raise things up to $30. Following my raise to 30, which looks rather nutted, by the way. It folds back around to the under-the-gun player, and he decides to go all in. He's got $71, and I already put 30 in. I'm not folding for this price. We might be beat. He could have all the overpairs, but such is life. We stick it in. Let's see a run out. This player flips over ace-deuce. Really good hand for us to see here. He's got five outs. We go once. Let's hold. We hold. Absolutely sun running tonight. We have mountains of money in our stack. Let's keep it going. This next hand we look down at ace king offsuit. I feel like we've gotten this hand 20 times tonight. Not complaining. We've got an under the gun raise to three bucks. I three bet things to nine dollars from the plus one position. It's getting late. Things are getting really splashy. The cutoff cold calls the nine. So does the small blind. And it gets back over to the under the gun player. He rips it all in and it's back over to us. The under the gun player 4-bet ripping his stack, gotta be really strong, right? Well, once you look at it a little bit, we've got a lot of dead money in there. I 3-bet things, but then two guys cold called the 3-bet. I mean, I think I have to call here with ace-king. It seems kinda close, but I don't think you're folding ace-king here, so we put the money in, let's go to a run out. This player flips over pocket jacks. We're gonna go ahead and run things twice here. There's $333 in this pot. Red, red. Yes! Let's go! Oh my god, that's so sick. Look at my, look at my. That's so sick. That's sick. Jack. That's, that's Jack. so sick. That's, that's you, Greg. That's so sick. First board goes to Jacks. Second board is so far. To wow, and I win so oh. sick. That's two. Oh my god. Wow, you turned two sets. Mm -hmm. Look what I fold. And we lose both runouts. Pretty unfortunate. But it is what it is. This is really like the only time that we've gotten sort of unlucky in this session. We lose both. We move on. Next hand. This next hand I kind of get out of line. Click some buttons a little bit. We look down at 410 of diamonds. We've got a cutoff raise to 5. The button calls. And I want to take a flop here. It's a pretty bad hand, I won't lie. But I spice things up. We flick in the call. Let's take a flop. The flop comes 357 rainbow. We check things over. The cutoff bets $10. The button pretty quickly calls, and with a backdoor flush draw as well as a gut shot. Also this board will do well for our range. We go ahead and call the 10. Let's see a turn. The turn comes the 5 of spades, and once again, I think in essence, this is going to be a card that's better for our range versus the cutoff range or the button range. We could lead here. We don't. We decide to check. The cutoff pretty quickly checks it back, as does the button, so we're going to the river for absolutely no charge. The river comes the jack of hearts. I really don't think this changes much. If somebody's gonna have a five, it's gonna be me in the big blind. I could also maybe have four six, some seven x. So overall, I just really like this bluff. I go ahead and bet $45. We see the cutoff tank for a good long while. Eventually he finds the fold, and then we get snap called by the button. He shows queen jack. I really couldn't have put him on this if I tried to. Really not much I can do about this. I like my bluff. 
I'm just surprised he had Queen Jack in the spot. On to the next hand. If you guys have made it to this point in the video, around the 25 minute mark, go comment I am a legend in the chat. Let me know that you've made it all the way here. Also, let me know what you think about this style of video. This is a really long one. If you want like a 10, 15 minute video, let me know in the comments. If you like the longer videos, also let me know. I'm all for the feedback. Let's get back to the poker now. We look down at Queen Jack of Diamonds, very pretty hand. We've got an under the gun raise to $4, and I three bet things to $16. It folds back around to the under the gun player, and he sticks in the call. We're going heads up to a flop. The flop comes Jack 8, 4, 2 tone. He checks things over to me, and I want to size up on this board. He is going to have a lot of straight, a lot of flush draws. So we pick a size of $20. He pretty quickly calls. Let's take a turn. The turn comes the Jack of Clubs. He checks it over to me once again. And in real time, I was thinking that he was a good enough player to be folding strong hands here if I bet. So I wanted to set the trap. Looking back on it now, I probably should be betting here given there is some straight and flush draws available. So a small mistake, but nonetheless, we check it back. Let's take a river. The river comes the Deuce of Spades. And this is when it hits me in real time that my check on the turn was so stupid. Definitely should be betting the turn. He goes ahead and leads for $50. And listen to the pain and anguish in my voice here. Just a f***ing flush every time, right? Not a flush. I have a jack. You're good. Yeah, JQ, for the win. We end up winning this pot with three of a kind. Villain here showed pocket tens, and we are good against that. Kind of an interesting bet from him, but we will take it nonetheless. Alright, this is the final hand from this absolute marathon of a session. We're playing a $5 five-handed bomb pot. Two boards this time. We look down at King 7, and it checks all the way around to us on the button. The top board we are open-ended. The second board we don't really have much going for us. But we decide to play this one a little bit aggressive, having the open-ender on the top board. We bet $20. The big blind calls. Everyone else folds, and we're heads up to a turn. We get a turn card on both boards. The top one doesn't improve us whatsoever. The second board, however, we now have an open ender as well. So we have two open enders. Really interesting spot here. I'm kind of unsure of what to do. Big Blind checks it over to us once again. And we go for absolute maximum polarity. Max fold equity. We jam things all in. It's about a 2x pot size bet for him to call. It's the last hand of the night. How can I possibly have a bluff here? He hits the tank for quite some time. I'm open-ended on both. This player eventually finds the call with two pair on the top board and second pair on the bottom board. He's got us absolutely crushed. We still have some outs, though. We don't get there on either board, and we lose a $371 pot to end the night. It certainly stinks to give back a large chunk of our profit on the last hand of the night. But I don't really hate our play. We had a lot of equity. We have some fold equity as well. And I think we could have maybe taken it down without any showdown. Even when he calls, we're going to have a good percentage. So it is what it is. All right, vlog. So that wraps up the session tonight. It's 4 o'clock in the morning. We've been playing since like 6, 6.30. It's a really, really long game. In for 150, out for 580. So grand total of plus 430 on the night. Really good session. Played a lot of good hands. And overall, really happy with it. If you enjoyed this video, make sure to like, comment, and subscribe to watch me turn my sand into gold. Take care.